Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach and I'm really excited about today's video. Today we're going to learn about sizing grounding electrode conductors and how to do it properly. This is one of many complex subjects that I teach you about and break down very simply for you over at electricalexamcoach.com. If you want to dive deeper, you can head over there. So there are three different tables that we use to size our grounding and bonding conductors. There are three different classifications of these conductors. The first one is a grounding electrode conductor. That's the GEC. That's the one we're going to learn about today. That's in table 250.66. The grounding electrode conductor is the wire that physically runs, we'll say, from the ground rods to the service panel, or from the ground rods to the point that you're wanting to attach in the system, or from the footing ground to the point that you're wanting to attach in the system. It's the wire that runs from the electrode itself to wherever you're going to terminate. The second type is bonding jumpers, and this has a lot of different subtopics. We can talk about main bonding jumpers. We can talk about supply side bonding jumpers, equipment bonding jumpers, and we size those using 250.102C1. And the third type is the wire type equipment grounding conductor. So if you are using a wire to be your equipment grounding conductor, this is where you're going to size them, and that's in table 250.122. Today we're going to be talking about table 250.66, how to use it properly. Let's get to it. All right, so we're in table 250.66. It's on page 116 of the 2017. 123 of the 2020 and depending on what printing you have of the 2023 it could be on page 149 but if not look around on some nearby pages and you will find it so when we get to table 250.66 the first thing we always do anytime we come to a table is we read the black bold heading of the table and make sure that we're in the right table many of the tables in the nec look identical and especially the three tables for grounding they look almost identical, and if you're not careful, you'll be in the wrong table. So we read the black bolt heading, grounding electrode conductor, great, I feel like we're in the right table. Now, how we read all of our tables is from top to bottom and left to right using black bolt headings to navigate the table. So starting on the left-hand side, we find the size of our ungrounded hots. Now, both of those columns underneath there are for the size of your main hot wires. And on the right-hand side of this table is the actual size of your GEC. And then if we notice on the left-hand side, there's a copper and aluminum column. And on the right-hand side, there's a copper and aluminum column. And how this works is if your hots, let's say, are copper and your grounding electrode conductor is going to be aluminum, then on the left-hand side, you would select from the copper side. But when you cross over to actually size the grounding electrode conductor, you would select from whatever composition you're wanting to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. And I want you to do some strategic highlighting of this table because it's very easy to get crisscrossed if you're not careful. If your state allows highlighting, go ahead and highlight that whole copper column on the left-hand side and then cross over and highlight that whole copper column on the right-hand side. And the reason we're doing this is that you know if it's highlighted, it's going to be copper so take a minute go ahead and do that now and then we're going to do some more strategic highlighting here in just a moment i do want to note that on the aluminum side it also includes your copper clad aluminum conductors they would be treated the same in in this instance uh, with this table in the aluminum table that's not a saying anything bad about copper clad aluminum it's saying just hey in this part uh, because of its ampacities and, and other things throughout the code book, we're going to group it over here with aluminum. They could just as easily make a copper clad aluminum column, but we'd have to expand the table. So we go ahead and now let's do some more strategic highlighting. I'm just going to tell you exactly what to highlight, and then I'm going to explain in just a few moments why we highlighted these key things. So go ahead and flip back one page if you're in the 2017 cycle. On the 2023 cycle, it's actually listed right below. Not sure exactly where it's at in the 2020, but right around that table is going to be section 250.66. And we're going to be looking at parts A, B, and C. 
So take a minute and find that, and then I'll show you where to start strategically highlighting. So when we get to 250.66a, it reads connections to rod, pipe, and plate electrodes. So when we're dealing with rods, pipes, or plates, we are going to use this column here, or this section here in this paragraph. And we're gonna do some strategic highlighting. At the bottom of this paragraph, I want you to highlight the words 6AWG copper or 4AWG aluminum. I want you to highlight that first. And then I want you to go back up to the title and I want you to highlight the word rod, pipe, or plate. Now this does not include a cold water line. This is if you're using like a piece of rigid metal as a grounding electrode conductor. I do wanna make that distinction. If you're sizing a cold water line, a grounding electrode conductor, you're actually gonna use the table 250.66. All right, the second thing that I want us to highlight is I want us to highlight in part B, I want you to highlight the word in the black bold heading, concrete encased electrode. Concrete encased electrode. And then at the bottom of that paragraph, I want you to highlight four AWG copper. Then in part C, I want you to highlight the word ground ring. And why they don't just go ahead and list the size wire right here in this paragraph, but send you over to another part of the code, I look forward to your public input in 2026. But they do. So I want you to highlight the word ground ring, and then I want you to highlight the code section about the third sentence down that says 250.52A4. 250.52A4. And then we're actually going to flip over to 250.52A4. And I want you to do some strategic highlighting there. So when you flip over there and get to 250.52A4, I want you to highlight the word ground ring. And at the bottom of the paragraph, I want you to highlight the word 2AWG. And then just above that line, I want you to highlight the word copper because it has to be copper. It's not, aluminum's not allowed to terminate. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's not allowed to terminate within 18 inches of the ground, but that is for a lesson for another day. All right, so now that we've done our strategic highlighting, let's learn about the rules for sizing grounding electroconductors. All right, with all of my teaching, I like to lay the rules out very simply. So, because as long as we play by the rules, we're good to go. So there's only two rules for sizing grounding electroconductors. If no electrode is mentioned, then we're gonna use table 250.66 at face value. So if you are in a question in exam prep scenario and they do not mention the type of electrode, you go straight to table 250.66, you start on your left-hand side with your HOTS, and you cross over and size your GEC accordingly. If the electrode is mentioned, first you're gonna check 250.66 A, B, or C, and see if it's one of those type of electrodes, and if it is, you're gonna use the value that is listed in that paragraph. It actually supersedes the table. Now we're gonna break this down one scenario at a time, and I'm gonna teach you the proper way to size it. I do wanna note that if you're out in the field, you're always gonna have a type of electrode. Only in an exam prep scenario would you be sizing a grounding electrode and not know the type of electrode because when you're out in the field, you physically either have a ground rod, grounding electrode, plate electrode, metal steel building. I mean, there's so many different types it can be. So with that being said, the thought of there being no electrode mention is only for exam prep purposes only. Let's go ahead and get to it. What size copper grounding electrode conductor would you select for a 100 amp service with number four main copper service conductors. So the first thing we ask ourselves is does it mention the type of electrode? No, it doesn't. So we're actually gonna use table 250.66 at face value. Starting on the left-hand side with our type and makeup of the service conductors. And this is when you're referencing back and forth to your question several times. First, what are my mains made up of? They're made up of copper. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side of this table and I'm gonna go down until I find the range that my wire falls in. Then I have to cross over to whatever metal it's wanting me to use for the actual grounding electrode conductor. And in this case, it's wanting copper. 
So I start on the copper side, I cross over to the copper side, and I'm going to select a number eight. So it's all about just being careful. And what I love about these tables is there's a very clear answer, especially in an exam prep situation. If you just follow the steps, which you know really are not that many steps, then this is going to be one of the easy ones for you on your exam. And every electrical exam from electrical inspector certification all the way down to your licenses and, and beyond is going to have a lot of grounding and bonding questions because it's a really important subject. What size copper grounding electroconductor would you select for a 225 amp service with three yacht main copper service conductors? So it's just being careful to read the question. Remember, I always recommend to read the question at least twice and all four answers. So when you go to navigate the codebook, you can start looking for that information in your keyword and index process. So the first thing, does it mention the type of electrode? No, it does not. So we're going to use table 250.66 at face value. We're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to select in this case copper because that was the makeup of our mains. And then it's also asking for a copper GEC. So we're going to make sure we cross over to the respective column and we're going to select a number four. So it's very simple. First, read the question twice and the answers twice. Second, does it mention the type of electrode? No, so we're going to use table 250.66 at face value. Then this is when we slow down and carefully select copper, copper in this case, and we're going to put it on a number four. Let's get to it. What size copper grounding electroconductor would you select for a 200 amp service with two watt main copper service conductors with a ground rod as the grounding electrode? First thing, does it mention the type of electrode? It does, so we may not be using table 250.66 at face value. We're going to flip back to section 250.66, and we're going to start reading the black bold headings in A, B, or C, and we're looking for keywords that are in our question. Just to note that if it does not mention your type of electrode in A, B, or C, you go back to the table and get the job done there. In this case, when we get to section 250.66, and we look at part A, we find that we do have some of our keywords. It says connections to rod, pipes, or plates. Now we're going to take the time and invest in reading the paragraph. Remember, everything that we're doing in exam preparation, when we're looking using the keyword and index process, is we are deciding whether or not we're going to invest the time to read the paragraph using those black bold headings. Because we don't have time to read tons of paragraphs during our exam prep time or our actual examination time. And we're going to find that at the bottom, it states that it's not required to be larger than a copper number six. Now, I do want to note that this code supersedes the table. And this code here is not based off the size of the wires. It's not based off the size of the service. It's based off of section 250.66 stating that if you have a connection to one of these three type of electrodes, it's not required to be larger than a number six. Now, if you're out in the field, you need to consider other codes like protection from physical damage and all these other things. But when it comes to exam prep or just using the NEC to size this electrode, the correct answer is number six copper. What size copper grounding electroconductor would you select for a 200 amp service with two watt main copper service conductors with a concrete encased electrode? First thing, does it mention the type of electrode? Yes, it does. So we may not be using table 250.66 at face value. Anytime it does mention the type of electrode, we're going to start in section 250.66 and we're going to read the black bold headings of A, B, or C. In this case, we find that in part B, it mentions one of our keywords, which is concrete encased electrode. So we're going to take the time and invest in the paragraph. After we read the paragraph, we look down at the bottom where we've highlighted and we find that it's not required to be larger than a number four. Doesn't matter what the size of the main service conductors are, doesn't matter what the amperage of the overcurrent device is, it only has to do with section 250.66b. I am the Electrical Code Coach and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. If there's anything that I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.